Doodlebutt. So this is the latest toy sent to me by Xtool. This is the Xtool F1. So this is a Galvo laser system as well. But the cool thing, not only does it have one laser, it has two. Don't forget to take the lens cap off. We got dual lasers going on. So we have a two watt IR laser. It's an end pump unit. Plus we have a 455 nanometer blue laser. That's a 10 watt unit. So this is going to be great. We've got all sorts of materials to do. The places that a IR laser can't do things like wood, for example, it won't, will not engrave it. I can put it underneath an IR laser full power all day long. It won't engrave it. Blue laser is perfect for that, but there's stuff the blue laser can't do. You can't engrave like raw metals. If you want to do gold or you, you can do some stainless, but you got to do it right. But brass stuff like that, no way you can do that with the blue laser. You need the infrared. So this, this got the best of both worlds, kind of like a double guitar. It's super cool. And to give you an idea of the workspace I'm dealing with, this is it. This is all, this is, I run my whole channel here. This is how much room I have. So good thing this thing doesn't take up a bunch of room. Otherwise I have to go out into the garage and it's not so pretty. But when you engrave, this, this will generate smoke, especially if I'm going to start engraving or cutting. This also cuts, there's an attachment on here. So uh, you can put your wood or other stuff on there, acrylic, whatever you're doing. Uh, but that's going to generate a lot of smoke and we're in this tiny little office here so we'll, they have an answer for that here we go this is the little x tool air purifier so you can see a little bit bigger than the machine itself i'll just put that down for size comparison there you can see but this is great if you live in a condo here in the lower mainland vancouver area it's so tough to own an actual freestanding house where you can have a garage a lot of people live in condos and you can't have a giant smoke show going on. So this is great. There's just a little uh, hose that connects in the back. USB, they talk to each other. Another power to turn the sucker on. And you can have it that it fires up when the machine is running. So it just does its whole thing. So that's super slick. And I'm going to be doing all the engraving in this tiny little space. Now, when it comes to assembling a complex machine like this, they got you covered. There is zero assembly. You take it out of the box, remove the foam. You got a nice handy dandy handle up here. It's, uh, I forget how much it weighs. I think it's four kilograms, four and a half kilograms, something like that. Put it on your desk and you're ready to go. Zero fastener, zero assembly. Plug in your USB, plug in the power, hit the power switch. They provide you the software as well. Xtool has their creative space and they do updates, everything all like that. So you can go right from here. It does work with light burn as well. Um, I've been playing with the tool of the, of the, both of the software. I find the XCS tool, there's the X tool ones a little better right now. You know, light burn will probably do some updates in time, but that's it. You <laughs> literally in five minutes, you can start engraving stuff. So all that cool stuff. And on, on top of it, this machine is crazy fast. This is a black anodized business card. Let's do a speed test on it. So I got the phone here. We'll do the stopwatch. I framed it up. You hit the frame button, now you can see the outline right here. I don't know if you can see that. There, now you got it. So again, you can put your finger here. It's safe, it's not gonna zap you. This lets you preview where everything goes. So we're all framed up. Let's time this. Okay, to do this, I gotta push the start button on the stopwatch, and there's one further up here on the machine at the same time. Let's see if I can coordinate. Three, two, one. Couldn't even stop it in time. I think it was under six seconds. Let's go back to the footage. We did 100% power on the IR laser, 1000 millimeters per second. A cool feature, because we have two lasers, we can do multiple lasers for multiple layers. Say that three times fast. I'm gonna do the same object. I did a score, now I'm gonna do engrave. I'll start off with the blue laser. Then on the next layer, I got, I got the layer numbers backwards, but it don't matter, we're gonna do Blue light first, we'll check out. Then I'll hit it with the infrared. Now, normally you would just do this on its own. It would just, you wouldn't stop to, you know, record a YouTube video. But that way I find sometimes when you use the blue light, it'll do a great engraving, but a little bit messy, a little dirty. Sometimes you gotta clean it. The IR laser is great at doing that. Let's see how that works. Let's inspect this with just the blue light. Okay, so we can get a good picture of it here. I didn't wanna move anything. Pretty decent, but let's now have a look at this after I run the IR laser over top. I'll use the exact same settings. I could see the improvement even with the cover down, but let's have a look here. Wow, that 
<laughs> that is night and day. So you can see the benefit of running it back with the IR laser just to clean up all the stuff that's left behind by the blue laser. Now, if you want to really see the quality of this machine, you gotta run a tighter line spacing. You can see the actual banding here. So that was only 100 lines per centimeter. We're getting, uh, yeah, there we go. Just with this, you can see the, the quality of the graphic there. This thing can really step it up. Let me show you another example. So if you've been watching my channel for any length of time, you know I'm a big fan of the Trailer Park Boys. I did this here on my Laser Pecker 3. This has a IR laser, a two watt, it's a fiber laser as well. So very similar type of thing, Galvo machine. And I was doing this business card and I had a high res picture of the boys there looking not too bad. The settings I used weren't quite correct, but if you notice on the card here, it's not finished. Like where's the rest of the image? This was taking quite a long time. Although it was pretty nice and clear, this has a 10 micron dot size. It was taking a very long time. So I took the same image. This time I did it with the blue laser and it finished much, much faster. I think it was just over 20 minutes. We gotta get the right angle here. Now let's get you zoomed in. The detail on this, like that is absolutely night and day. So not only is this uh, F1 really running super fast, we're getting much better detail on here too. That's also sometimes the benefit of having the two lasers. Um, I did have to wipe this one off. I was in a bit of a rush, but what I would have done is an IR pass. I would have hit it afterwards with the infrared to really clean it. But I just gave it a quick scrub, got some of the residue off, and the clarity on that is just, you can see the difference. So I did a little testing just so you can compare the two lasers, because it's neat that you can do this on one machine. So this is the blue laser, this is the IR. The blue laser really ablates everything, but does leave some residue. It's a little tricky to pick up with the camera, but there's a smokiness that's on there. With the IR, you don't have that. It's much cleaner, but you can see some little fine lines there at the top. Let's get you in there. You can see that a little bit. So yeah, now you can see the smokiness now there too. So what I did here, same thing on a separate card. Now on this one, I did uh, IR laser first followed up by the blue and it's clean, but still those defects. This was the blue laser and then followed up with the IR laser. So you can see now if I scrub this one here, it would probably come out brighter, but probably not quite as bright. So this is what's nice. You can just use the laser to clean everything up and just absolutely spotless. The camera's actually having trouble focusing on that. There we go. So it's super clean and you don't have to clean the, your, uh, your engravings afterwards. Now I have this little leather pen case I want to engrave. This is gonna go to uh, Maya Furlong who runs the Vancouver Pen Club. So I have my text over here, have it upside down because that's the way I had to put it in. And then what you t simply do is you just frame your object. Now, if you look on it here, we have to line things up. We get the rectangle all lined up, get it centered. I'll double check it off camera, but sometimes you just want to see how it looks. So you come over here, stop your framing, change it to an outline. And what that's going to do is outline all the text. Let's show you the difference now. So there we go there. So this is really handy when you're trying to line certain things up. Maybe you have text that's going around a round object or whatever it is. This now really gives me an idea of what this is going to look like. The bottom of the characters, you can put your finger here, by the way. It won't hurt you, no matter, so don't worry about that. This is a great little feature, though. I'm going to run 100% power. Again, 1,000 millimeters per second. I don't know. Let's hit the button and see what happens. I only got one shot at this. Just let's give it, there we go there. That turned out quite nice. This is a great example, switching it to the outline for the framing. I'm gonna put my logo here in the back of the case, but this really lets you know what it's gonna look like. Maybe you wanna enlarge it or shrink it, but this really now lets you understand what it's gonna look like before you hit the button. So thought I would try my hand at doing a coaster. They supplied one in the materials kit. And I just finished watching The Big Lebowski. So it's sort of a match made in heaven. Really surprised how well this turned out. It came out really good. Um, nice clarity, took about 10 minutes, which is pretty reasonable. So I, I'm, I'm gonna do quite a few more of these different ideas too. Thought I'd try this out on paper if you wanna do a birthday card or just a bunch of envelopes, whatever it is you wanna do, something fancy. Ricky LaFleur there at the Sunnyvale Trailer Park will be getting something. <laughs> but 
Also did my notebook, tried a pretty detailed graphic. I, I should have had less power on that. So flipped it over, did this nice little sunflower and bee thing going on. There, uh, I got some coasters around the house. I ordered some a little while ago. I thought this will be perfect for this too. So that turned out quite nice. I had to get my wallet. I'm just engraving everything. Found some weird graphic of like a murderous pig and thought, uh, okay, let's try that. It looks really cool when the laser and the smoke is there and it's engraving. Why not do a little on the stainless steel? For some reason, I decided to go with the skull. That's not my personality, but I'm just engraving everything at this point. Tried some leather. There's a lot of leather folks out there to do all sorts of crafts work. Wow, super, super crisp. And so here's something, just a little bit more finer detail. Was curious how this would look on the leather and uh, yeah, pretty darn good. So if any of you are parents, you know the deal. We just had back to school. We got new water bottles, couple thermoses. This is easily well over a hundred bucks, like no problem. <laughs> it adds up so fast. But uh, all the parents, we buy the same stuff. So our kids have the same things. How do you know whose water bottle is whose or thermos? And these, I don't know, whatever they are, $30 or something silly. You don't want to lose it. So here we go. We got one of my daughters did hers first. We got her name on the back. So that way we know whose water bottle is whose. And she already told me she came home from school. One of her friends has the exact same one. And she didn't know if it was hers or somewhere else. Boom, had her name on it. So she knew. So I'll show you the setup here real quick. I'm going to do the, uh, the thermos here. We took out the regular base plate they have this one for uh, doing cut throughs now if you have the rotary you're gonna, you're gonna do you know a few of these you might do it on there i'm just doing a name so i don't need too much you can make a jig again i'm just doing a couple so i don't need to anyways i got the text the way i want it. it's upside down because it makes more sense to go this way i'm gonna run two layers blue and then follow it up with the infrared now one little trick in the main screen here so don't click on your object but it asks the processing path. Here we're gonna do by layer, which means it's gonna do the blue layer first and then the infrared layer second. You can drag them up and down if you need to change stuff. I don't know if you can see this, but I'm doing the outline framing. So you can see the name is getting displayed. So I'll just slide it up and down to get it right where I want it. And you get a live preview of what's gonna come out. Okay, let's have a look here. Yeah, that is just so clean. And since a few of the kids have the same gun, we might as well put his name on it. So the F1 has a fan down here to suck out all the smoke, and then you can uh, amp that up with way more <laughs> suction on this thing and filter it. However, when you go to engrave on wood, uh, air assist is a big thing. So in the background there, that's my D1 Pro, it has an air assist, which means when the laser goes along, there's an air jet right next to it to blow off all the smoke. So I thought I'd do a test, got a little Canadian, uh, theme going and we got a piece of cedar like west coast cedar here we go so i did a light engraving and it comes out nice and clean okay that's great but what if you want something like nice and deep and dark well now we're getting some of that smoke because we don't have the air assist so does this mean you're going to get dirty engravings on this one no so i did the other side and we just did multiple passes so i went 100 percent power Maximum speed, 4,000 millimeters per second. It's really, like, who cares if it's, uh, you know, 10 passes, but at 10 times the speed, it'll finish in the same time. So here we did five passes at 4,000 millimeters per second, max power on the blue laser, of course. And then I did 10 passes. And you can see just how dark it is. We went way down there. Maybe I'll measure it, but it looks at least a millimeter. And look how clean that is compared to down here, right? So just increase your speed do multiple passes, uh, play with your power settings a bit, and you can have really deep engravings, but also keep them nice and clean, even though we don't have an air assist that's right next to clean it up. Also been extremely impressed with this air purification system. It pulls off the smoke very good. It's got a very strong fan, and I was engraving wood, all sorts of stuff in an office, a very small office, barely a whiff of the smell. So this thing, uh, if you don't have the ability to vent and smoke and smell is gonna be a big issue, you'll definitely wanna pick one of those up. It comes with spare filters as well, so they got you covered. So I've been around the house just engraving everything pretty much I can find, and I have been thoroughly impressed with this X-Tool F1. Um, we haven't even gotten into the rotary. The reason for that is, uh, this is the rotary from my D1 Pro that I have in the back. I said, oh, you don't need to send one along. I already got the rotary. 
challenges, they take a different connector. So we're gonna go from here. Now we're going to USB type C instead of plug in directly into the board. So uh, they, there's a, the cable's on the way. I'll let them know and we, we both kind of forgot about that. So the cable's on the way. We are gonna do some pens. This is a, a Gravitas pocket pen, uh, sorry, the Gravitas entry pen. Planning to engrave that. I'm gonna be getting some assistance. There's someone else who engraves pens and uh, they recently picked up the exact same unit and they are doing a phenomenal job. So we're talking about doing a little workshop together because I wanna know, how are you doing those awesome en engravings with this? They're gonna walk me through it and hopefully other people can follow along and learn if they're interested in this stuff. One thing with this machine, so it's, it's not a commercial style machine. So if you're looking at one of these to make money, don't go after the stuff that everybody else does. Where this thing shines, one, it's got great resolution, good speed, it's portable. So go after like niche market stuff. I did this coaster, showed this to a client of mine, and they thought that was the coolest thing ever. They are huge big Lebowski fans. And I said, you know what? They've been a they're they're left for they're a friend. They're a client, but they're also a friend. I said, you know what? I'll order in some more coasters and I'll give some to you. They thought that was amazing. That also got me thinking. Let's say you're a mortgage broker or a realtor, someone just sells or buys a home with you or you do a mortgage with them, you know, maybe don't put this on there, have a nice kind of warm expression. On the underside, on the underside of mine was me forgetting to invert the image, but on yours, if you do it right or get uh, or do this for other folks, you can put their contact information, maybe their picture, their contact information that way. A friend is over at the new house or whatever it is they're celebrating. They have a drink. They notice the coasters. Oh, those are nice. Oh, yeah, I got it from my realtor, my mortgage broker. Boom, the information's on the bottom. Um, you know, so for realtors, mortgage brokers, stuff like that. That's a great way for uh, get your name out there as well. All sorts of niche things you can do this with and apply this to. It's portable, which is great. You can take it to craft fairs. It's great because you can also put your information, your uh, sorry, your objects in here. People can watch it get ablated with the laser and they don't have to wear the goggles. Obviously, if the job requires you to have it open, uh, be sure to have your goggles on hand because uh, yeah, it is insanely intense if you have that cover open and you don't have goggles on. Trust me, uh, safety is absolutely paramount with this. But huge thanks again to Xtool for sending me this to review. Again, I've only scratched the surface. There's a bunch more to do. There's a three-year anniversary sale they have going on. So if you are into something like this, there's a huge sale. Also, there's a code, XToolDO, on qualifying orders. It's above a certain dollar amount. The details will be down there in the description along with links, but saves you 80 bucks. So hey, that's even better. You can catch a sale, save 80 bucks as well. Yeah, you know, if this is something you're looking into, hopefully this video has helped you. Check out some other ones too, because obviously I didn't touch on everything. But thanks again to Xtool for sharing their new F1 with me, dual laser, tons of fun. Last thing I'll mention, I see this come up all the time in forums and people troubleshooting saying their machine is broken. It's only showing one laser dot now. What's up with this thing? I've barely had it for two days. You forgot to take off the lens cap. So. <laughs> When I do mine, I pop it off and I put it on top so I don't lose it and it's right there. But anyways, that's the tip of the day. Thanks for watching. All the information will be in the description. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't. Stay tuned for the rotary stuff and we'll catch you next time.